RPS is potentially the most cat-friendly games publication in the world. The majority of us on staff have cats as pets, which means most of our meetings are interrupted by our furry companions jumping onto our keyboards and sticking their tails in front of our webcams. Here's a cat that lives in my home and doesn't pay rent. She contributes nothing to our income, yet I would die for her in an instant. This is relevant context for the subject of this episode of My Fav Thing, a series we do here at Rock Paper Shotgun, where I chat to one of my lovely colleagues about a brand new video game they've been playing. Today I'm joined by Editor-in-Chief Catherine Castle to hear more about Stray, a puzzle platformer where you play as a lovely little cat as they explore an underground city populated by robots. Enjoy. Hey Catherine, so you've been playing Stray. What is your favourite thing about this brand new feline adventure? So I think it's a tie really between the cats, the actual physical cat that you play, uh, and the city that you find yourself in. Oh right. I, I can't think of another video game where you actually play as a cat. So that, that you know, that's quite novel in itself. Yeah. There are plenty of cats in game, but you rarely get to play as one. And I think that the team at, uh, at Blue 12 uh, have done like an amazing job basically of making it just feel like a really real cat. They've got a lot of a good good catisms down, you know, you can scratch the furniture, you can <laughs> knead or I as I like to call it making biscuits on like nice. rugs and stuff. It puts its claws and just kind of like yeah, kind of like it's kneading some dough. That's that's quite good. You can drink from from little kind of like water bowls that are around Aww. and about. You can bap little balls, run into stuff. You, you can occasionally get paper bags on your head and the controls go all haywire because you can't <laughs> see what you're doing. Yeah, very good. There are lots of also kind of little spots where you can curl up and just like have a little snooze. Aww. And it does this really lovely thing where the camera just sort of pulls back really slowly and some very chill ambient music starts to play and just sort of gives you a really broad wide view of your surroundings while you while you chill out and have a little sneeze. Oh, and it's lovely. just really lovely yeah. which yeah so yeah very very good cats almost equ equal to that is is the city itself it's sort of really a, an amazing space um again considering that the dev team is so small it looks fantastic but the production values are just absolutely mind-blowing and it just feels like a really natural place um you know in a lot of kind of 3d platformers a lot of the time because these environments are so dense and detailed in order to guide players to where they need to go lots of um, as I'm sure you all have seen in, in games, lots of ledges are, are seemingly, you know, quite strangely slapped in white paint and, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like it's very clear which surfaces you can and can't jump to, jump to. Stray sort of does have its own version of that, but it's not quite as obvious or as kind of as artificial uh, as other kind of 3D platforming spaces. Okay. You can't just jump to any surface, but when you can jump, there is, you know, you, you basically get a button prompt telling you, you know, yes, you can make that jump. And it, you know, it is just then a matter of pressing A. But I think just without having those visual cues of all that paint uh, and, just, and just having a very simple button prompt, which you still need to move the camera around to kind of like figure out exactly where you can and can't jump. It just sort of feels a little bit more dynamic in terms of like what yeah. you know, your, your, your involvement, your interaction with this place and kind of trying to you know figure out a path through this yeah, this kind of jungle because you know obviously you're a cat you're very small you're jumping on a lot of air conditioning units balconies kind of you know wooden planks rooftops yeah it just it just feels like a really natural space and i've really enjoyed kind of you know noodling about nosing around in all different corners getting you know finding paper bags put over my head and <laughs> get trapped and <laughs> yeah it's a really really lovely kind of place to just kind of explore and yeah just be, be a cat. The city from trailers and, and pre-release material that I've seen, I haven't played the game, I've only just watched marketing material, but the city is uh, populated by robots. Yes. Does it feel otherworldly? Like, does it feel like you're in a city that doesn't exist or are there parallels to real life cities? Because I, I can't quite get a grasp on whether or not you're in like a dystopian world or you're in just a reflection of our own that just happens to be robots there? Yes, so, so it, it is actually kind of a city that humans used to live in. So yes, it is kind of more of that dystopian real world, ah. kind of the world, the, something bad has happened outside, <laughs> more or less. 
you actually sort of start off outside the city with a with a group of cats and oh. sort of in the opening kind of you know in the opening tutorial area you you get separated from them. so you sort of fall down you miss a jump and you fall down into the depths of this of this strange underground city which is yes populated by lots and lots of robots yeah as as the story unfolds you're you're more or less kind of trying to find a way out of this city to get out of it and to return to your to your cat pals and so yes you're sort of going from the depths from the slums right up to kind of the top level so yeah there there are there are it is yeah a living breathing city and it does feel as i say it does feel very natural space to 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 play and to explore in as you go through the town and speak to more robots you know they themselves will remark on like, oh yeah, isn't it weird that like all the robots have now adopted lots of very human habits? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, they're, they're sort of left to their own devices. They will just yeah do do and mimic as, as as humans once did, which is which is quite neat. Interesting. Yeah, so that, that's that's kind of the deal with the city. But yes, there's sort of other other story elements that I that I can't talk about right now. But I also wouldn't want to spoil anyway because yes, people should should play and find out for themselves. So. Bottom line, then, do you think this is worth playing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, cer- certainly, if, if if you're a cat owner, if you're a fan of cats, this is this is <laughs> certainly the game for you. But yeah, I mean, even even, even if you're if, even if you're not cat mad, yeah, it is it is a really just lovely little adventure game that yeah abs- looks absolutely stunning. As I say, kind of the the animation, production values, the lighting. Oh man, it looks amazing. Mm. Uh, you know, when once you've, when when you've got all the graphics whacked up at you know high resolutions, yeah, it looks absolutely stunning. And yeah, as I say, it's just a really lovely little adventure. So yeah, if 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 you're at all interested, I would I would strongly recommend having a go of Stray. Oh, brilliant! Well, considering ninety percent of people who work at RPS are cat owners, <laughs> it feels like it the defining uh, RPS game. Yes, I may be slightly biased. Having own, owning two cats. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Hey, thanks for watching. Are you excited to play Stray? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please do check out some of our others, both on the website and on YouTube, and I will see you very soon.